are you doing here? I'm getting us what we wanted, what we fucking talked about. I'm doing it. You were supposed to help. You and I can still get out of this. I'm not trying to get out of it. Just go away, okay? I'm not gonna go away! Oh, calm down! Oh, Nikki, you're so scary. situation in the first place. I don't know, I guess being a psychiatrist doesn't mean you know what you're doing. Well, it wasn't really the first time it fucked up. It's just all very confusing. It's a long story, so let me just start in the middle. Fucking idiot. You're a fool. You're cool. You're so cool, you'd buy anything. Met some real shitheads, and I met some real, real shitheads. But you bought it. You bought it hook, line, and sinker. You bought the whole fish. <laughs> believed who I was. You really believed it. You're fucking stupid. You're stupid. <laughs> mm, not stupid, just weak. That little complication gave my career a shot. Yeah, <laughs> right in the heart. You know, no one likes a scandal, nobody. And I gotta tell you what few friends I had disappeared in a heartbeat. Everyone, that is, except Kate. She's my lawyer. And to be honest, she wanted to be more. So I went looking for answers in the desert while she tried to clean up my mess I was in. And what the hell, you know? Hey, if it could work for Moses. I'm Dr. Whalen. We spoke on the phone. Edward Altman. What brings you to Palm Springs? Oh, 
I just need to slow down. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Dr. Altman, that's your office right there. So tell me, how long have you been practicing? Ah, oh, it seems like forever. <laughs> that's a long time. What school did you graduate from? A uh, small school, Grambling. Grambling? Wonderful football team. Well, actually, I was on the uh, handball team. Handball? Well, incidentally, this is the room where you'll be receiving your uh, confessions. Oh, let me show you this. I bought this building for this view. Is that a killer? Uh, so tell me, uh, are you married, Doctor? Excuse me? Are you married? Oh, no. Oh, how come? <laughs> Good looking man like you. Sorry I am late. There was this, you couldn't believe it. There was this truckload of fish that was on the highway and it completely spilled over. And it smelled absolutely awful. I, am, I apologize, really. It was disgusting, though. You can't imagine this. How's my case going? Well, they're not going to drop the charges because they think you slept with the girl. How am I going to prove that I didn't? I don't know. We'll work on that. I think I can get them to drop the case, as long as the lawyers are reasonable. Oh, look, lawyers are never reasonable. Just do what you have to do and uh, bill me. Yeah, right, like I'm going to bill you for living here? No. Interesting place you have here. Yeah, it's my parents. I hate to break up the party, but something really stinks here. Oh, God. That's probably because the maids haven't been here for so long. Oh, that's yeah. disgusting. We can ignore them now. <laughs> Look, the girl's family, they won't make any concessions. They want to see your license to practice taken away. And they want to see you in jail. I got a real problem, don't I? Mm-hmm. Oh, God. You know, Nick, I deal with all kinds of people. Old people, young people, fat people, skinny people, even ugly people. <laughs> I don't know. Ugly people got to get laid, too. Right? I got to admit, you are one ugly pile of puke. <sighs> you know what I like about women? Perfection. Long legs, real hard ass, you know, like a like a hard piece of fucking oak. You gotta have a hard ass. Allie, Allie had a hard ass. Allie has a hard ass. That's what I love about women is their their ass. Ass is thin waist, long legs, and lips. Lips like what is that? Uh, is it uh, what is that fruit? Uh, what, what is it? Funny name. Uh, kiwi. Ellie had kiwi lips. I love kiwi lips. Mm. Beautiful, sucky, sucky, fucky, sucky kiwi lips. Kiwi lips. Kiwi lips. I don't care what anybody says. Women are an addiction. And I've dealt with a lot of addictive personalities in my business. Alcohol, drugs, violence. They're all learned. Let me tell you something. The worst is women. And hey, man, you're born with that one. Thank you.
you got. You're waiting for someone? May I please borrow a pen? Sure. If you decide not to camp out here tonight, I'll be getting off at about 12. I think she was talking to you. <sighs> what makes you think that? There's me, there's you. And I'm obviously unavailable. Last call. Can you buy a drink? Sure. Want a good honey? Sure. So what line of work is your husband? He makes money. So what do you do? Work with people. Inside their heads. So what's your first impression of me? Professionally speaking, of course. <laughs> well, I'm sure you could wrap any three guys around your little finger and they wouldn't even know it. Tonight, I wouldn't mind being one of them. You are trouble. Well, you really are trouble. What's your name? Have a great night. You must be sweating your balls off in that outfit. Why don't you roll the window down? No, roll all the way down. Well, now you're getting smart, huh?
sorry. I can't do this. We were hiking and we got separated from the rest of the group. And then as we were walking along, I noticed that um, his unit was large and extremely erect. Uh, who was this boy? He's my best friend's son. To see his unit uh, large and erect, how'd that make you feel? I found it upsetting. I'm sure it was. Maybe we should just uh, discuss this at a further time. Don't we still have a few more minutes? Wouldn't you like uh, a little more time to discuss this? All right. See you next week. Hello. Wasn't expecting you. I wasn't expecting to be here. Well, it's not much of a view. I expected something a little different. Well. I don't look out the window very much. Doctor, I have a problem I'd like to talk to you about. I don't know if I'm just interested in this guy or if I'm in a depression and he's looking good to me. Well, how long have you been married? Too long. Uh, why don't you just walk away? It's hard to walk away from something when you've got nothing. If I were to show you the way I lived, would it help you solve my problem? Mm, I believe it would.
Uh, no. Look, I went to the bar, I had a drink, I came home. Oh, I'm wearing that pink dress you like so much. Yeah, the one you really like. I'm gonna wear it when you come home. I wish you were here too. I was just about to get into a hot bath. Mmm, that sounds good. I'd do that for you. I'd do anything for you. with you that actually. That's not what it said in the paper. Well, I don't really care what it says in the papers. I'm a professional. I don't sleep with my patients. <laughs> That's not what her family thinks, though, right?
I'm scared, Ed. I know. He's coming back tomorrow. Excuse me, can I help you? Oh, the janitor let me in. They'd be okay if I uh, waited here for you. Are you Dr. Ted Altman? I'm Nolan Phillips. I don't believe uh, I recognize your name. Do we have an appointment? No, I didn't, and, and you don't know my name. But I've heard yours around town. And how about you being the new guy in town and everything? It's hard for people to keep a secret around here. Oh, let me see. Maybe we can uh, fit you in, perhaps on a Thursday. I won't be here Thursday. How about now? All right. Uh, you like to fuck? I like to fuck. Everybody likes to fuck. It's a way of communicating. You know, sometimes you're happy. So you're fuck happy. You're happy. She's happy. Fuck happy. Sometimes you're angry. So you fuck angry. A savage, right? You pull, you tear, you fuck each other so hard. And sometimes you can't. No matter what you do. It's like dead. Zippo. You ever been there? It happens to all of us. Yeah, well, I asked, has it happened to you? It has. Has it ever happened to you with one person? Now, you can fuck a stranger. You can fuck a hooker. You can even fuck somebody else's wife. You can't fuck your own. I don't know if it's her fault or my fault. I'm starting to hate her for it, Doc. Why don't you trust your wife? I don't know. I don't want to hurt her. I don't want to go to the joint either. Have you talked about this with your wife? My wife. That's a good idea. I have to go now. Thanks for talking to me. wonderful encounter here a couple of years back. I was on my way to a psychiatric convention. It reminds me of today. It was hot and airless and, you know, standing by the side of the road was this beautiful girl. She was hitchhiking. I pulled over. She got in the car and 
she was I was on my way to uh, this convention and uh, well anyway to make a long story short I never got there we stopped off at this little hotel that was uh, just before we entered Palm Springs and she was just so vulnerable in there and I remember as I was entering her it was like she was like a warm uh, a warm honeydew sticky and hot and as I kept getting larger and harder and as I kept going deeper and deeper I finally exploded it was sort of a abnormal amount of sperm I just uh, I was just so excited Dr. Goldman. Sorry, I didn't interrupt anything, did I? I was just thinking about what you had said about our last session, and you were right. Uh, it is our problem. So I took the uh, liberty of bringing my wife here today. Sit down, honey. Ed, this is Allie. Allie, this is Ed. So where do we start? Well, Doc, we haven't had sex in uh, how long, honey? Six, seven months? Well, if it's easier for you, Miss Phillips, I'd rather come back at a later time. Ed. Ed, what are you doing? This was your suggestion. You were supposed to help me follow this through. What's the deal with that? You don't know how much I appreciate this, honey. You know what pickle is, Ed, right? You go to a lot of baseball games, don't you? So you have a runner who gets caught between two bases. And the infielders, they're just throwing it back and forth, and back and forth. You can't go left, you can't go right. I can't have sex with my wife, Ed. Because I'm jealous, Ed. I'm insanely jealous. And the more jealous I become, the harder it is for me to think about having sex with my wife. And the harder that becomes, the more I think about her having sex with someone else. And that's the ultimate fucking pickle. You know, I mean, I'm busy, I'm on the road a lot. You start to wonder. You know, is she sleeping with another man? She keeps a journal, Ed. You ever read someone's journal when they're describing themselves fucking another guy? Did you, Ed? What well, wears on your head, you know? Like a loop, like a loop, like a loop, 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 loop. loop. I won't do this anymore. Stay for this, okay? Understand? Look at me. Come on. See what I mean, Ed? It's a goddamn pickle. But uh, I brought something I wanted to show you here today. That's my bitch. I own that bitch. When I call, I expect that bitch to come. And only to me.
Hey there. You look great. Victory, Dr. Ed. I got the whole family off your back. Well, how'd you do that? Because I was good. Because I was tough and I was understanding, and some people do anything for a lot of money. Uh, what about my friends at the uh, licensing board? I think that'll be taken care of. I think they're going to back off just like the family did. Good. How would you feel about suspending our professional relationship for one evening? to do it. All right, let's make a deal right now. Let's make a deal not to fuck. Sex is gross anyway, isn't it? It's sweaty. It's unnecessary. What do you mean? It can be a lot like eating dinner. Ed Altman. Ed, it's Nolan Phillips. <laughs> I fucked up, Ed. I fucked up big. You gotta come to my house right away. Look, I don't take meetings outside of the office. I don't want to do something stupid, Ed. You know, something that might ruin my life. <laughs> you understand that, don't you? Ed, what's wrong? Uh, just a small problem with one of my patients. Are you seeing somebody here? What do you mean? I mean, are you seeing somebody here? Yes. But are you fucking her? Are you enjoying it? Are you in love? You know, I am trying to play this fucking game. I'm trying to play this game that you play, and I can't play it. I can't play it. Nolan! Nolan, are you there? I'm sorry I missed our last appointment at my house, Doc. An emergency came up. What the hell are you doing in my house? Oh, something's happened. And I think it's time we talk about it. You know, like, uh, mano y mano? Then 
why weren't you at your house? I did it, Ed. I did it. I fucked her. Oh, yeah, it was an angry one, Ed. The kind where you torture each other until they're both weeping with pleasure. Why are you telling me this? Because you're my shrink, Ed. Hey, let's stop fucking around. That's not why you're here. Well, then why am I here, Ed? Because you're fucking my wife? Services are no longer needed. Allie? I shot him. Oh, Jesus, what the fuck happened? Did you call the police? self-defense. Your husband was my client. He was a very sick man. Oh, Jesus. He was a manic depressive. He was extremely violent. He had all kinds of problems. What do I say if they ask how we met? You just stick as close to the truth as possible.
Dr. Waldman. I'm Detective Vollers, PSPD. You got a minute? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is Detective Lampert. Uh, we spoke to Mrs. Phillips last night. No, Mercer. Mercer. Right, she uses her main. Mercer? Yeah. Right. She informed us that uh, when she got back from Los Angeles that she unfortunately found her husband dead. Well, actually, he was murdered. And uh, she also mentioned the fact that her husband was seeing you professionally. Uh, he did visit me a couple of times. So, when's the last time you saw him? Last night, he called me and asked me to come to his house. You do house calls? Sometimes. In severe cases, sometimes... Officer, it's, uh... Much better for the patient to remain at home. You know, comfortable surroundings, uh... Till the medication kicks in. Uh-huh. I see. And how was he when you saw him? Well, when I got there, he was out of control. And, um, actually, he, uh, he settled down a little bit. He was much better than the first two visits. I was at his house uh, because of a little uh, miscommunication, a little misunderstanding. Mm. I'm curious now. Uh, you had this little misunderstanding, and then he was out of control? Was he out of control towards you? Sometimes with manic depressives, the aggressive tendency can increase uh, on the up end of the cycle. Ooh, I hate to see what they do in the low end. Well, I'm really interested now on this uh, miscommunication, misunderstanding. Now, okay, so was there anything personal that went down between the two of you? No, nothing. So everything when you left was kissy-faced. Well, let me get something straight here. Now, Mrs. Phillips, according Mercer, Mercer. Right, Mercer. This is Mercer. Right. According to her now, her husband saw you professionally three times, right? That includes the time that she came along and had a session with him. Is that right? Correct. And you could tell that quick that he was a manic depressive. Look, I could tell right away he had troubles the first time he walked into my office. Yes. To answer your question, yes. OK, so right away you knew to prescribe lithium on that very first visit? I mean, is that what any shrink would recommend? In severe cases, uh, that's the correct procedure. Well, it's strange. You see, you already had one patient who was on lithium. And uh, she began a suicide, isn't that right? Oh, yeah, yeah. That uh, the girl ran under the bus. That was, that was nasty business. That's unfortunately his uh, occupational hazard. No shit. That beautiful girl had a full life ahead of her. Let me ask you something, Doc. Was that a third pure fuck you were giving him? <laughs> what the hell would you know, you uneducated little prick? Oh, that's a no-no. Because now we have a misunderstanding. Lunch? Yeah, man. How about a uh, pizza? Nah, nah. Thai? Thai, OK, you're on. Retrospect is a funny process. It not only illuminates a situation, it usually makes you feel pretty stupid in the process. I don't know, I should have seen something coming. Sure, Ellie was good. But I'm supposed to be trained to see through deception. I guess as the saying goes, when the dick gets hard, the brain gets soft.
Hello, this is Ali Mercer. I'm out of town right now. Leave a message and I'll call you back if I feel like it. What are you doing here? Dr. Oldman, we have got a problem. Actually, you have the problem. Now, why is Dr. Oldman in so much trouble this morning? Because he lied. Hey, this isn't right. Don't you need a search warrant or something? Now, this is a lot of crap. You guys can't do this. Oh, we can't? Well, then why don't you call the cops? You see, after investigating Nolan Phillips' death, we somehow see you in that picture, that gruesome scene, and personally, I think you're guilty. I think I'm gonna need a lawyer. No shit. <laughs> Assume the position. I'm not. Sprinkle it over there. having a sense of deja vu, and Kate Harris. Bob. Bob Vollers. <laughs> That's Officer Dean Lambert there. As uh, I mentioned earlier to your client, we have a whole string of problems here. Well, Bob, fire away. Well, OK. <laughs> Problem number one. <coughs> your client claims to have received a telephone call from the deceased Sometime around 11 to midnight, is that right? Mm -hmm. Wow. That means you spoke with a dead guy. <laughs> now, I think this would be a very good juncture to see the video from the Phillips's very own security system. Problem number two. Your client was at the Phillips estate at about 6.30 p.m. on the day of the murder. As it stands, per the uh, preliminary autopsy, the uh, time of death is set at around 6 or 7 p.m. <laughs> Ta-da! Voila! All right. This is number three, the murder weapon. Now, there's two sets of prints on this weapon, Mr. Phillips's, and you guessed it, your clients. Mr. Phillips called me at home to meet him around 8.30. Well, I guess that's another problem, because I don't show any regular lab call. Well, where's Mrs. Mercer? What the fuck did she say about I all of this? Settle down. Well, actually, I spoke with this Mrs. Phillips, and uh, she was in Los Angeles at a wedding. A lot of witnesses. She came home, she found her husband murdered. See, so her scheduled flight, her arrival back, and her uh, call to the precinct, all confirmed. <laughs> yeah? Well, what are you guys getting at? I'm getting at wrapping this one up, Kate. I want to talk to Mrs. Mercy. Will you just knock off the crap with the missus? It's Allie to you. We know you've been stuck in her. <laughs> Jesus, did you make it interesting? <laughs> I want you to read this lamb chop. <laughs> I love the way you read it. <laughs> Saturday the 3rd, had another fight within. So jealous I can't stand it anymore. 
If only I did what he accused me of, maybe I should. Monday the 9th, finally decided to do it and slept with the shrink from the bar. Can't believe I could make such a mistake. Can't get rid of him now. Out of control. God, what a nightmare. An obsessive shrink keeps turning up wherever I go. <laughs> Are you sure there isn't something you want to change in your statement you made earlier? <laughs> You thought you could be this guy. Thought nobody would suspect you, Nolan Phillips. Got ties to the mob from the moon and back. So you went over there the other night when he was all alone, and you blow his fucking head off, gangland style, but you are stupid. You think you're smart because you're a hedge maker? Very educated man. You don't know, Dick. And that house, the cars, nothing's his. Nothing's in his name, man. It's all in the name of some company that he owns absolutely no part of. It's just some well-paid friend who wandered money. <laughs> hey, look, you know, if I thought I had a shot at it, I'd want to be this Nolan Phillips guy, too. <laughs> I need to uh, take a moment with my client, please. OK, counselor. Kate, I swear to God, I've never seen this guy before. I don't buy it. Hey, you know me better than anyone. I wouldn't do this kind of crap. Hey, you were there. What? Look, I don't... I can't remember what was going on. You were outside of my office with a bottle of champagne. There was a couple. anybody. These guys want to put you away right now. So what are you in for? Self-preservation is a genetic imperative. Everybody has it, and I'm no exception. You just gotta grab the evidence, whatever the fuck you do, steal a car. The alternative is frying in a chair, spending the rest of my life in prison. Hey, man, fuck it. That's an easy call. The only chance I had was to find the wacko who set me up. The cops didn't believe he existed. Without him, it's my word against the uh, grieving widow. And hey, man, grieving widows win every time. I knew Kate would help me. She's a good girl. She. She just wasn't my attorney. I mean, she was special. She loved me. Love. <laughs> Love. Now there's an addiction I know nothing about. What the hell are you doing here? Look, I am your friend, but I am your lawyer. You've got to go back there and tell them exactly what's gone on. I just need your help. 
You've made it impossible for me to help you. Look, that patient I was seeing wasn't her husband. And you know what? I don't want to have anything to do with this. Look, all I got is a goddamn photograph and a tape. You're the only one that saw the two of them together. OK, look, it's me. It's Ed, OK? I don't kill people. Yeah, well, you're scaring the shit out of me. Well, just give me a little time, OK? I don't know what's going on. I just. No, you can fuck a stranger. Fuck a hooker. You can fuck somebody else's wife. <laughs> you can't fuck your own. Well, if he's not the guy that got killed, who the hell is he? <sighs> I don't know. Where'd you get these photographs? He brought them into my office. Good looking dog. Is it? Here's the answer. I want to hurt her. I want to go to jail. I don't have any idea you what you're talking about. about. Listen. Listen to this again. Listen carefully. I don't want to hurt her. I don't want to go to jail either. 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 But you're reaching for something here. Why? This guy's playing the role. I'll bet you anything this guy's talking about himself. You don't even have a name. I mean, even if you're right, where are you going to start with this? Right here. I'll bet you his goddamn fingerprints are all over this. You pull a favor with one of your friends down at LAPD, check it out. I swear I'll never ask you anything again. And if I'm wrong... Great, this is one crazy son of a bitch. He's a pilot. It's a well-known fact that exposure to violence anesthetizes a person to it. The other interesting fact about violence is uh, it's contagious. You never know yourself as well as you think you do. Don't get me wrong, my primary purpose, of course, was to clear my name, but I have to admit, I wanted him to pay. He messed with my head, and now it was my turn. 
Not exactly a fair fight. After all, uh, I am a professional. You're so cool, you buy anything. Met some real shitheads, and I met some real, real shitheads. But you bought it. You bought it hook, line, and sinker. You bought the whole fish. <laughs> you believed who I was. You really believed it. You're fucking stupid. You're stupid. <laughs> Would you roll down the window, please? Roll it all the way down. Roll it all the way down. Now you're getting smart, huh? Sweet Jesus. You're a real smart little prick, don't you? Take a good look at yourself. Now, isn't that a man who has everything? Fuck you. You know, huh? Right. Well, how does a man live with that kind of thing? I'm curious. Well, look at you. Look at me. No competition. No sweat. No competition, no sweat. That's your reasoning? Well, you gotta do what you gotta do. You gonna tell me you love this woman and the whole time you know I'm fucking her? No, no. I set it up with her. See, we outsmarted you. You lose. I win. You're talking about my insides are fine. Your insides are gutted out, Ed. We took you. Let's talk about truth here, huh, friend? She took us both. She had us both on the end of the hook. I don't believe shit. Can I take your order? Um, could you give us a few minutes? Oh, yeah, sure. Listen, pal, let me tell you something. I know a hell of a lot about women. I understand women. They operate in a totally different way than we do. You trusted her. And how did she get your trust? She seduced you. She used you. She made you feel loved. This girl was working you. She was playing you. And you played right into her game. She was looking for two things. One guy with brains and an errand boy. You just think, if you piss me off enough, somehow it'll carry over onto her, right? But there's one thing, doctor, that you're forgetting here, and that I have something with Ellie that you'll never have, and that's a past. You, of all people, should never underestimate the power. Get her in the car. I'm gonna give him the what? You're gonna listen to what she's gotta say. Oh, you're gonna listen? I'm gonna get in the trunk, huh? Hey, you're gonna listen.
Move your ass. All right. Pull a gun out. I'm fucking listening. Have to listen to all this? Hop on the trail. Get in the trunk. Get in the trunk. <laughs> I'm gonna make you listen to what this bitch has to say. You got the guts for that? You gonna make me listen? Fuck you. Who are you gonna make me listen? Who didn't make me listen? Here, I trust you. You trust me? Be back in a second. <laughs> You're here. Open the trunk. What do we have here? Hmm. I think I'll take this one. Oh. I got a brand new car. It's over there. Well, um, you know, there must have been some kind of a misunderstanding here, you know? Oh, yes, huge misunderstanding. <laughs> well, you know, I got some tickets for us. Excuse me? Got two tickets on hold at LAX. Oh, you got a ticket for you and you got a ticket for me? Yeah. Oh, did you uh, purchase them after I uh, took care of your husband? Oh, fuck it. What do you expect me to do? Do you know how hard I worked for that money? The indecencies I went through to get it? Like what? Sleeping with me and... Uh... Well, no. I think that was the best bit, actually. <laughs> Certainly the easiest. Yeah. I picked you, Ed. You were so perfect. I read about you in the papers. Saw you on the TV news. You know, all the time I was wondering if you slept with her, that patient. And like some miracle, you showed up here in Palm Springs. It was perfect. <sighs> the, the person was like, uh, supposedly, uh... Oh, well, I needed three men, you see. A rich man, a sensitive man, and a stupid man like Nick. A what? Nick, he's an idiot. He's probably still waiting for me at, like, this abandoned airport somewhere. Did you get jealous, Ed? Did you? Huh? Have you known Nick? I've run around with Nick for years. Little cons, low end deals, losers, really. Then Nick got arrested. He went down night and I didn't know what to do. So I made it Vegas working crap tables. And then one night there's this real high roller. He's buying drinks for the whole town. And he just had to have you. When God gives you a gift. So you married him. Opportunity was knocking so loud, my ears were ringing. I knew Nick was going to get out sometime, but I didn't see it as a problem, because I had a plan.
doing it. I don't know what you're doing, but we're doing it. Grab it. Nick? Allie? How strong are you? What are you talking about? I have an idea. Something that could be really good for both of us. But first, I need to know that you're strong. All right, I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong. I know you are, baby. I mean, you know, if I asked you to be strong, you know, for both of us, do you think you could do that? Hmm? How would you feel if I were to sleep with another man? Hmm? It's a joke, right? No, I'm serious. It's not a joke. It's a game. How far would it go? All the way. But I mean... I'd be doing it for us. I'm not going to be doing it for sex. I mean, I'm not going to feel anything. I need no. your blessing. No, no, no. I can't go for that. I'm sorry. I'm not going for that. What do I have to do? Love me. Love me. I do love you. Now I got to keep loving you while you're fucking another guy? Hmm? What are we really talking about? Money. Lots of money. Lots and lots and lots of money. Goodbye, fuck. Huh? Like your shrink friend, ah! huh? Come on, you don't even have to. You don't have to say you Ed. love me or nothing or nothing. He's going crazy. Ah! Ah! Well, we just might have another problem right now. Don't turn him down. Oh, great. It's a little short cut with the uh, little man's complex. Hi there. Hi. Boy, is it hot, huh? The reason I stopped you is because I recognized your beautiful car. You know what? I've got to get back to my. No, 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 no. Just wait. Just stay. Stay. Right there. I'm going to have to see your license. That's nice. Very nice. Just a minute. Trying to kill your husband? How does it feel? How does it feel to have no heart, Allie? How does it feel to have no heart? Tell me. So many men. I want to know what it's like sleeping with him. It's always dangerous. 
because he's hungry, just like me. Tell me what it's like sleeping with me. What it was about me. Tell me about me, Allie. Tell me about me. What was it like? Huh? It was easy. It just... I didn't have to think. It, it was what it was. It just was what it was, huh? And that was that, huh? He wouldn't understand any more now than he did when we first met. Are oh, you just gonna leave me at the fucking airport? You left me! You were locked up. I had no fucking money. I had a fucking truck that was falling to pieces. I would drive up to, a, to an intersection and it wouldn't stop! Oh, yeah, you shut up! Just shut up! A light would turn green and it would shift and the transmission was completely... Shut up! Look, I did what I had to do and I'm not going back to that. Betrayed. What did you want me to do? You betrayed me. I wanted you to not fucking depress. You said you could do this. You said you could be strong. You betrayed me, because you're a whore. You're a fucking whore. But this isn't about that. You said you could do this. I could do that, but what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I'm getting us what we wanted, what we fucking talked about. I'm doing it. You were supposed to help. You and I can still get out of this. Just go away, okay? I'm not gonna go away! Oh, calm down! Oh, you're so scary. Don't shoot him, he's a sick man. He needs help. Drop the gun, man! Drop that fucking gun! Put that gun down! After all of this, I'd feel relieved or ashamed or even guilty. I mean, you'd have to admit I'm not exactly what you would call a lucky charm. Not to those two people, anyway. But the fact is, I don't feel much of anything. 
I'm just weak. Women are my addiction. I guess I could blame it on God. <laughs>